Morning, everyone. Um, this is the last day of Brain Health Week and uh, another um, lineup of fantastic interviews today. And I'm thrilled to say I'm starting uh, nice and early in the morning with um, Dr. Sharon O'Donnell from um, the Waterford Medical Centre. So welcome, Sharon, and thanks very Thank much very for much. Uh, taking taking the time. I know we've kind of been chatting to and forth over probably nearly a year at this stage. So, uh, Absolutely. <laughs> it's great to finally to, to, to finally get you on camera. So um, what, we're, what we're going to talk about today, um, Sharon works um, as a GP in uh, Waterford, as I mentioned, and obviously has a great interest in women's health and menopause as part of that. So I guess, um, Sharon, like I was saying to you earlier, you know, the week really we've been talking all about um, brain health, how to look after your brain and protect yourself. And um, I, I know that's something you would see on a regular basis uh, when you work with uh, women in menopause. But for many of the people who've watched um, throughout the week, what would you say that your recommendations are as in, you know, the first place to start in terms of, you know, visiting your, your GP? Okay, so I suppose, you know, when it comes to menopause, Catherine, people end up coming for a variety of reasons. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I suppose it's very important to say that, that a lot of people find that they class menopause as when you get hot flushes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, and, and they feel, oh, no, I'm not menopausal because I don't have any hot flushes. Yeah. Now, in, 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 in my experience, the thing that, that affects women most around menopause, that's the most problematic symptom, is in fact the effects on your brain. Yeah. The brain yeah. health issues. So the low mood, the mood swings, the irritability, the, the um, increased, hugely increased anxiety, the decrease in cognitive function, the yeah. memory loss, the difficulty concentrating, the forgetting the names of things, you know. Um, that brain fog, that feeling of overwhelm. Yeah. People yeah. seldom come in with just a hot flush. In fact, yeah. they deal with that. Yeah. They've gone yeah. to they've gone to the health food shop. They've tried one of the supplements. Ah, oh, yeah, I get a bit of benefit from it. And the other thing, of course, is the sleep. Yeah. The sleep yeah. deprivation, the poor sleep, which all ties in with the brain. Yeah. So so um. These are the things that people find most problematic. Very often, they don't actually think that it's something that needs to go to the GP or to be asked medically. They feel they need to be having hot flushes yes. or something like that to go. Um, yeah, it's very, the, I, very, I, the very things that are the most problematic are the things sometimes that they won't go about. Hmm. So yeah. I find when I'm in the middle of a consultation about it, you have to specifically ask. You know, are you finding that you're getting very anxious? And they're like, oh, my God, yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. Um, um, are you finding you're forgetting things? Oh, yeah. Oh, God. I can't, you know, yeah. um, and they all, they all, so many people say, oh, sure, I think I'm, I, I'm serious memory loss. I'm actually really worried. Hmm. So, so I suppose what I'm saying is 100% that is something you should go about. You should go to your GP about. Um, because that is very successfully treated when you do the right things. You know, there's an awful lot you can do for yourself um, to improve your brain health. So I, suppose I always start with basics, 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 basics. Are you getting the basics right? Are you drinking enough water? Yeah. yeah. Are, you, are you making sure you can try and sleep properly? You know, is the room too hot? Yeah. Are you on a screen before bed? Are you watching TV before bed? Are you having tea and coffee? You know, do relaxing things before bed. The usual sleep hygiene kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Are you getting enough air every day? You know, are you getting exercise every day? And you eating the right foods? Yeah, huge. <laughs> huge. Yeah. You know, it's, it's yeah. absolutely massive. And, and I think before you start talking about anything else, those are the basic things that everyone has to get right. So, I mean, if someone's having a litre of, of Coke, you know, mm. Coca-Cola before they, in the evening after six o'clock, they're not going to sleep. Yeah. So you have to look at the real basics first. 
Yeah. And then you start getting onto specifics with regard to um, uh, things that they can change, I suppose, at, at that age group, yeah. you know? In terms of the lifestyle, I, I often say that when it comes to, like you mentioned earlier, when it comes to perimenopause, menopause, like to me, and I know I'm not, um, um, you know, for, for women who do get severe hot flushes and night, night sweats, I know they can be extremely tough. But I do think I do think sometimes they can actually be the, nearly the easier of the symptoms to turn yeah. around when you compare to, you know, the anxiety, the vaginal atrophy, the brain fog. It, they can be just take more work, I guess, um, and absolutely you know, need help with. Yeah, you know. absolutely. And I think I think people are very reassured when they come in that that's so normal. Because they, they all feel that, okay, I, 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 funny enough, like the amount of women have said to me, funny enough, I don't really get flushes. I'm not too bothered with the flushes. And, yeah. or I can cope with the flushes. You know, they, they often say that I can cope with the flushes, but the, everything else is really getting to me. You know, it's affecting yeah. my relationship. I can't stop mm -hmm. snapping. I'm, I'm, I, I don't feel like doing anything anymore. I'm getting really down. I'm standing at the kitchen. Sit. I mean, in the last couple of weeks, few people, you know, typical quote, I'm standing at the kitchen sink and I'm overwhelmed with this yeah. feeling, yeah. you know, out of yeah. the blues. Like that sort of thing is very hard to cope yeah. with. Yeah, and particularly um, if, you've never, if you've never experienced it before, if you've never had any form of anxiety before, um, it's very yeah. scary to then all of a sudden it starts yeah. to happen. And I think what, what can happen is a lot of women kind of think, oh, what, it's me, what am I doing? And they kind of completely forget that it's the hormones that are reducing, right. that are causing right. the upheaval, you know? Yeah. So and it comes with of course so many changes in our lives at yeah. this age yeah. anyway yeah so, you know we're all we're all starting to think uh yeah. is it just because the kids are older is it because i'm sick of my job is it is it because my relationship's gone stale is it you know all the things yeah. that women come in and say but maybe maybe it's that or maybe it's that but sure like there is a common denominator and it happens to be falling levels of estrogen yeah um, you know i think when people when that's pointed out to people it's kind of a bit of a relief it's like no 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 this is normal this yeah, is what totally. happens yeah. you know and it's happening millions of women at the same yeah. time you know? 800, yeah. 8, 850 million women i think it, uh, is the number at the moment <laughs> yeah they're saying one <laughs> what is it 1.2 billion by 2030 yeah yeah the the the, the yeah it's a, it's a lot so well i tell you it's going to be a significant um it's going to be a significant uh, workload on the health system yeah yeah because i mean we're getting much more proactive with menopause which is great yeah women are talking about it more yeah the partners are talking about it more Mm. You know, tw twenty yeah. years ago, a, a, a partner wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. Know, that, that's yeah. Doctors are engaging with it more now, slowly. Yeah. You know, yeah. and there isn't there, there, there's more and more people who are who are good with it. But I mean, certainly in the next ten years, if you've one point two million people um, worldwide, um, and we're talking about it more, there's a significant. Um, you know, I mean, from a cardiovascular point of view, from a bone yeah. health point of view, from a brain health point of view, significant workload yeah. and, and work to be done. You yeah. Know? I mean, I think um, I know the, the women's task force um, with the Department of Health. Um, I've been involved in that on the menopause um, stream. And, you know, and, and there's various other streams all around women's health, which, you know, hopefully now after COVID, um, will, it'll pick back up again. But I think that's yeah. just going to be simply... If it delivers as I'd hope it would do, I mean, I think that will change the landscape um, for us, or certainly, yeah. I, would, I would hope. But yeah. Sharon, Sharon, if you, so, you know, if you have um, um, a woman with you and you've gone through, you know, the general lifestyle um, tips and so forth, or, um, you know, their habits that you've talked about, what are their choices then in terms of um, HRT? And, you know, as I was saying to you earlier, one of the things that I find is, you know, sometimes women think that really the, the choice is a tablet and they don't understand yes. that there's so yeah. much more um, to it. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, well, I suppose, first of all, and I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll just get back to the HRT in a second. First of all, there's loads of other things they can try first. So we might get back to that. Yeah. yeah. But um, for, the, for the moment, um, HRT comes in lots of different shapes and sizes as such. So the, the very traditional one at the very beginning that we, we started off with was one years ago called Prempac. Yeah. and Premarin. This is an estrogen made from horse urine. Estrogen that, you know, it's evolved a lot well, since then. Now, now, it's evolved a lot, having said that, not monumentally, because estrogen is estrogen. And, you know, in general, there's only a couple of hormones. You know, estradiol is pretty much in all of the hormone replacement therapies in, in varying doses. So, there isn't a huge amount of variation in the type of actual estrogen. It's just how you take it. Okay. Yeah. What does vary in the HRT is the progestogen component. Um, unfortunately, the progestogen is the bit that tends to give us side effects. So, so yeah. that's what makes an estrogen uh, suit some women i uh, sorry a hrt suits some women and not suit others it oh, tends yeah. to be the progesterone component of it so from the point of view of how you can take it the traditional form was um, oral hormone replacement therapy and how you took that purely depended on whether you had a uterus or yeah. not or whether you'd finished your periods or not so it's either um continuous HRT where you take one tablet every day that has a certain amount of estrogen and progesterone in it and you don't get a bleed or sequential HRT where you take estrogen every day progesterone for part of the month you still get a bleed which protects the endometrium or the lining of the uterus and and you can kept going with that so that's the traditional oral HRT the much more preferential um, uh, type, a uh, way of taking it is by a transdermal approach, which means through the skin. Yeah. So an estrogen or an estrogen and progesterone combined patch is applied to the skin, usually one once a week or one twice a week. Um, and it, it, the, the, the hormones are absorbed directly through the skin, which absorbs which avoids having to digest it and go through the liver, liver. Yeah. which therefore reduces its risk of a lot of things. So for people who have a family history of thrombosis or stroke, that's a much more preferable way of taking it. And in fact, is now recommended as a first line yeah. um, uh, alternative, really, or a first line approach when you're prescribing HRT for somebody. Now, you can take the estrogen and progesterone combined. At the moment, I don't think there's a combined patch available. There's a huge HRT um, Short shortage. <laughs> um, what, 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 is, what is a perfect combination, and the one that's recommended at most menopause clinics in the UK and around the world where, where people have a bit of expertise in, in menopause and in, in Ireland, is a transdermal estrogen patch, one twice a week, and a, a progesterone administered usually either vaginally or a, via a marina coil, which is a, a marina intrauterine system, which is a coil, a, a T-shape, I'm, I'm sure your customers, your, your followers are, are familiar with marina, but basically it's a little, uh, uh, intrauterine system which delivers progesterone very very slowly into the lining of the womb so it protects the lining of the womb mm -hmm. it makes your periods lighter yeah and gives you uh, uh, the progesterone bit of HRT for up to five years so it's kind of perfect for women in their late 40s going through the menopause because very often your periods get problematic at that stage. Yeah. Yeah. Erratic, heavy, Heavier. unpredictable. Yeah. And the progesterone in the, in the marina uh, solves that problem whilst giving you the progesterone bit of the um, HRT. And then you just pop a, a, a patch on with estrogen twice a week, sort it. And, and if now, it's there's also transdermal estrogen in a gel form, 
Um, so there's a couple of gels rather than patches called Divi Gel, Easter Gel. There's lots more available around the world, but in Ireland, they seem to be the two we can get our hands on sporadically yeah yeah um, and the gels work in the same way as the patches so um you they're they're rubbed on um every day that's the difference yeah and and you've mentioned there um other than the coil that there was another form uh, that you could vaginal, use. yes vaginal progesterone so this there's actually a tablet called utrogestin which yeah. is a which is a uh, like a bioidentical progesterone. I mean, it's it's as close as we can get to a progesterone that's similar to our own, as as far as we know at the moment. And you can take that orally or vaginally. Right. Okay. Um, same tablet, actually. Um, right. Okay. And it's either yeah. taken on in a continuous dose right through the month. Um, or sequentially for the last 14, 15 days of the month, either orally or vaginally. Right, okay, okay. And that, yeah. would, be, that would be separate then to the likes of Vagifem, your uh, local vaginal yes. estrogen. Yes, yeah. so, so Vagifem is a wonder uh, drug. And there's another new one actually called Invagis as well, which is topical estrogen. And topical estrogen means estrogen you rub on. So similar to what you put through the skin in Divi Gel and Estrogel, but Vagifem and Invagis are specially formulated to, to insert into the vagina. Um, they are really, really, really important drugs for women mm. in their um, perimenopause and menopausal, particularly postmenopausal women. Who, who have GSM or genital urinary syndrome of menopause, so vaginal atrophy, which yeah. can be extremely problematic. Yeah, yeah. And not, again, it's not something people talk about. No. So it must, they must be asked about it. You know, yeah. have you any problems passing urine? Do you find that you're peeing more often? Is there stinging when you go? Do you have... Um, lots of libido goes with menopause, but do you have pains during intercourse? Are you able to have intercourse? Mm. And these are specific questions that must be asked because women have extreme discomfort mm. and the topical estrogen really works wonders there. And it really has pretty much no contraindications. It can be used copiously and continuously with minimal worries even in people who've had breast cancer yeah yeah and 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 sharon it would it would it's i do a lot of um lives on instagram and that would be one that i would talk a, a lot about and um, jane lewis in the uk um is a great advocate of of talking about vaginal atrophy by by far it's definitely the most common symptom i see and like you say um you know, um, women can be slow to talk about it, but once you oh, yeah. once you ask, all oh, so of a sudden, you, all you of the sudden yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. It, it's it's the one it's the one symptom that I generally I would generally say to women, you know, this isn't going to go away on its own. Um, this yeah. needs intervention. This, you know, you need to. You can't kind of put your head in the sand and think, you know, it'll go away soon because it actually won't. It'll only get no, worse. and it can get so bad that it's yeah. nearly irreversible. You know, yeah. I mean, the, the yeah. there's a window. Can, yeah. There's a window of opportunity, isn't there, yeah. in terms of is, yeah. you know trying to make sure you 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 stay you stay on top of it. And an awful lot of women in their sixties who who present with recurrent urinary tract infections. They, they, they do so well with um, topical estrogen, you know, yeah. vaginal estrogen. And very often they've been attending a doctor for years. Yeah, I know. I, mean, I guess another antibiotic, another yeah. antibiotic. And yeah. then they're on long term, low dose antibiotic. And yeah. you give them a couple of weeks of estrogen and then maintenance and they're and they're great, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I I, th I think that's just the education really around vaginal atrophy, isn't it? From, yeah. from 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 all angles, really, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and um, you, you, one of one of the things that I know um, women get very concerned about is you know when it comes to HRT and uh, the risks of breast cancer. And I know um, uh, you know a lot of the the studies that were done 
they, you know, we're really, I mean, they've been, there's been a lot of flaws and um, that's been, that's been shown in terms of the group of women that were studied and so oh, you could talk about that till, till the cows come home. But, um, you know, what, what, what's your advice or, you know, what would you say to, to women who are concerned um, yeah. about so, risk. so I, I think first of all every case has to be individualized so there's no blanket rule mm. so depending on the effect on their QO you know their quality of life um, it has to be taken into account the risk versus the benefit we know that there is some link between hormones and breast cancer when you think about when you think about HRT HRT is like a low dose of the pill estrogen and progesterone women are taking the pill for 20 years mm. you know and then they go on hrt for two years and everyone's saying oh the risk of breast cancer we're taking these hormones anyway right yeah. through our lives a lot of the time and we don't we don't um freak out as much about women younger oh. age who, who could be taking the pill up to the age of 48 or 45 so it's it's sort of always baffled me to a degree why uh, HRT gets the focus about breast cancer. We know, look, we know that there's definitely a risk. We know that that has been shown. We know that it seems to be much. It seems to be more from the progesterone bit of the HRT mm -hmm. now, not estrogen replacement therapy solely. Um, it may be the case that when you use uh, an intrauterine system like the marina, that the risk is lower, but that is not certain yet. Yeah. So I yeah. think there's still work to be done. Um, the study, the big study from last year that, that got to all the newspapers certainly showed that if you're on HRT, combined HRT, particularly for more than five years, your risk was increased. Um, I think the way I normally start off by talking to women, like if they have a very strong worry about it, um, but they are very, uh, uh, they're suffering a lot, I will always say, look, you can try it for a couple of months. That's not going to increase your risk. Yeah, yeah. And see how you feel. And if it has been life altering, well, then you make your decision. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and yeah. I, and I think because because it's not like when you're prescribing something for someone, you say, "Well, I'm going to put you on this for the next five years," because they yeah. don't have to take it for five years. Yeah, and the risk is higher when you're on it for five years. So you can just say, "Look, we'll take it a few months at a time and see how you get on." And maybe six mm -hmm. months might get you through a hard patch, or a year might get you through a hard patch. Yeah. It's sort of like when yeah. you, when people go on antidepressants, if they're also having counselling and making changes. But then they're ready to come off them. Yeah. So if they're going on HRT and they're taking control again of their lives and they're making their relationships better and they're getting into exercise and focusing and getting a few hobbies that they had lost interest in, it sort of self perpetuates. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. sometimes then they can come off it. And and I think too, I think you know, menopause is a great time in terms of we do reassess we do look at where our life is. there's a great there is an awakening and a positive side to it and i think absolutely once, once, once you get a handle on all the symptoms and where you're at you're kind of in a place that you can see the wood from the trees i guess absolutely you know? i think it is such an important time to get your life together and just look at yourself with a camera from the outside and go okay here i am next I'm at the half <laughs> about the halfway point because you know we're yeah. all living yeah. I've heard to a half of our lives now after menopause, which is yeah. which is great. Yeah. And you know, we have a, a freer sort of a life at that stage. You know, there's less responsibilities, there's less, you know, there's young kids running around. You're not just climbing the career ladder. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff that has settled down and and, and we all have a little bit more time to look at what we want to do. And I think it's a real time to become your very best self if you can. And if yeah. you were never fit, get fit, because it's more yeah. important than ever now yeah. with your yeah. bone health, your muscle health, your brain health. Mm -hmm. You know, if you haven't been eating healthily, now's the time, because it's going to make such a difference to your longevity and future health.
big so time. So it's a great, it's a great time to reassess, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, big time. I think, yeah, I, I think that's kind of, it, that, that, that is, and I think that's been very much of all the interviews this week, that has been the, the kind of the trend all the way through in terms yeah. of it is looking at where your life is at, what do you need to do? And I guess one of the biggest things um, that's come up, particularly when it comes to brain health, is, you know, looking at your stress, managing your stress, yeah. you know, what you can do around it, you know. And I think I, think I always take the, the view that um, it's a woman's choice whether they decide to go HRT or decide to uh, look at lifestyle natural. For me, it's given the information, and I think you have to look at your life and how your life is impacted. And for many women you know, HRT is a godsend. For others, maybe it's not required or it doesn't suit. Absolutely. So it's, it's, it's not, as we know, <laughs> it's not a one size fits all, you no, know. it's not, and it doesn't, and it's also not, not suitable for, for certain women. You know, I mean, there's women who, who could never take a day of the pill in their lives. They're not going to be able to take HRT. Yeah. You know, as soon yeah. as they go on, like, they feel like they're going crazy or they're bloated, their breasts are really sore. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of people who can't tolerate hormones at all. And, and that's where the more natural uh, remedies and, and solutions are, are so important to look at. And I mean, in studies, there's been, a, there's been very promising results, particularly with where we were talking about brain health earlier. I mean, there's, there's great um, promise with quite a few of the supplements. You know, fenugreek actually had a, a funny little anecdote um, I was at the cheese counter in Sheridan's <laughs> in, in Keen stores in Waterford uh, recently, and I was buying a cheese. I was looking for a particular cheese that had a herb in it called cumin, and I, it really funny combination, but I thought it was lovely. And he said, no, but I have another one that has fenugreek in it. And um, he said, um, it might be good for you. And I said, sorry? And he said, well, it's 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 been shown to have a lot of benefits. Um, he said, look it up. <laughs> was so he being connected? And, and it, it, is, it is, you know, it's, it's topical in menopause. And it's one yeah. of the, the, so I thought it was, here I am, like, I'm clearly a woman of that age. <laughs> and the guy at the cheese counter <laughs> is telling me this cheese may be beneficial. I thought it was quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh lord yeah it kind of it, follow, it follows you everywhere doesn't it <laughs> yeah it does it does but but you know you were talking uh, earlier on we were we, we the, the whole idea of the natural route i think if women can't take hrt they shouldn't lose heart because there's there's plenty of alternatives with the right guidance yeah and i think the mistake is when women kind of go out and they try this or they go into this shop and they get yeah they come out <clears throat> having spent quite a lot of money um on and, 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 unproven and, things yeah and sometimes what i would say sharon like there's i definitely think there's some supplements that can benefit and that do help women but what i often find is either sometimes something is bought over the internet that's been marketed as a fantastic save everything when it comes to menopause Disaster. or or maybe they're picking up a supplement that, you know, maybe again, due to marketing or it's maybe not understanding the labels and the quality of the ingredients, I think is yeah. really, really important. I know actually in Waterford, you have a fantastic um, lady, Teresa Murphy. Um, do you know her? She's, um, she has a health store, uh, Nature's Remedies in Waterford. Oh, yes, 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 um, I do know. Sorry, I know the shop, yeah. Like someone like that who is just an absolute oracle and yeah. so 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 they're like loves to help people um and you know as opposed to she's not there because of financial motivations it's purely she loves what she does and right, okay. i just think sometimes we can women can just be when you're in really stuck and you can't see the wood from the tree you literally can grab anything and i think it's so important like you say to get advice and you know, um, to understand what you're taking and why you're taking it. Yes. I had I had a woman, Sharon, last year. She was very young. She was only, God, I think she was maybe 40, 41. She went into a local health store. Um, she was having some issues with her periods. Um, and basically, 
she was recommended, I can't even remember what the, the sub, sub, it was red clover, sorry, she was recommended red clover, which phytoestrogen, high dose, um, and she took it, and she, she, she contacted me after about three, four months, and she was basically saying, oh, I'm in menopause, and I was like, okay, and I went through everything with her, and, and I was just kind of like, this just doesn't make sense. And I, I so it started to say to her, you know, did you take, have you, what are you taking? So generally people will say I'm taking X, Y, or Z. So she was saying she, she was taking red clover. She'd started taking it three months ago. The hot flushes had started about three weeks later. And I just said, listen, you're not in menopause. You need to stop taking the red clover because it was actually giving her the hot flushes. And that was, you know, and I did talk to her and she just basically said, you know, she'd just gone into her health store and, talked about her periods and this is what she was given so i think it's just you know i'd always say be very mindful, dangerous particularly, particularly when it comes to to phytoestrogens mm. and take them when you need them you know um, and there are some fantastic ones out there but but you know it's taking them at the right time you know yeah yeah and getting the right advice as you said yeah yeah. And, and, you know, I think an awful lot of this stuff, uh, if, if you're going to go to uh, phytoestrogens, it's great to get them as close to natural as possible. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it's like our food. We should be eating our food as close to its, its origin as possible. Yeah, you know, you said, yeah I'm like, I mean, it's been shown, and in fact, Lisa Moscone um, advocates the Mediterranean diet, but I mean, the studies for years have shown, like from the PREDIMED study years ago, um, that that's the best diet from the point of view of a lot of things, cardiovascular health and brain health, because we, we've, we've looked at people who are living till the age of 100 on little islands or the top of mountains yeah. in Italy, and they do do very well. But it's natural food. It's like the fish is fresh, the food is fresh. So it's the same with phytoestrogens. And that's where, you know, extracts that are directly from plants yeah. extracts that are direct you know that's where herbalists come in proper medical herbalist comes in because it's 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 much purer than um what a pharmaceutical company may have made um that may have only a tiny amount of active ingredient of what you're looking for and you can combine yeah. them as well and in, in, you know so yeah yeah i i am um, I, I i as i was saying i'm um chatting to roshin a herbalist later on today um because i find um herbs uh, just fantastic and again it's like it's given it's given women the option that you absolutely know, have, have and, and it's so important to have options yeah um so um sharon any final tips you would give to anyone listening um, well, I think I think the most I think the most important tip um, around menopause is to take the time to assess yourself and look after yourself, so that going forward you really have many years of good health to look forward to. I think we reach a crossroads where it's either a slippery slope, and you make that decision to go down that slippery slope, or you say, "I'm going to get better." Yeah. I, I'm going to be yeah. as good as I can be. And, and as I said, if you've never been fit and healthy, now is the time to do it. If you've never eaten well, do it. If you've, you yeah. know, if you, if you've never done those hobbies that you were going to do when you were, you meant to do when you were 20, great, <laughs> now's the time. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's, it's all about passion and purpose. Great, yeah, yeah, absolutely. 100%. Yeah. 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 So, um, for so as I mentioned, um, Sharon is in the Waterford Medical Centre, and I know obviously with COVID things are in a bit of flux, and you're you're quite busy. But um, um, certainly, you know, I would highly recommend anyone in Waterford or near um, contact um, uh, Sharon's clinic. And I think the one thing Sharon you, you said just to mention though, do mention that it's for a menopause session because it obviously would take a little bit longer and so forth and you know but um um yeah definitely and it's great you know one thing i'm finding sharon is that i'm kind of finding um uh, gps around ireland now who um have good experience in menopause because i'm very conscious of the fact everyone hears about dublin the whole time and yes. we need to try and get the 
the scales we need to be like an octopus and you know absolutely no, no, to... there are people around ireland now who have who yeah. have um, a special yeah. interest or expertise in menopause and i think uh, great. the more the merrier you know yeah, there's you know, there's a lot there's a lot there's a lot of us out there a lot of women out there of a certain age <laughs> and everyone everyone deserves to be looked after properly you know great um, well, Sharon, thanks, thanks so much, and thanks, thanks for a million, uh, coming in today. And uh, we'll definitely, I'll be down in Waterford actually over the summer, so we'll uh, <laughs> definitely catch up for um, uh, a coffee, coffee at social yeah. distance. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. All right. have, have a lovely weekend. Thanks, thanks a million, Catherine. Thanks everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye.